Hey, welcome to Digi Pro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson, and here we work smarter and not harder, which is why today we need to have a look at this Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro that has got so much hype recently because it could, it could change the game in whether you can edit video on a mobile device and ditch your computer. Am I going to get one? Is it worth the money? Is it a game changer? Let's find out. Okay, so to find out how much of a game changer this is, we need to kind of go back a little bit, retrace our steps, and find out whether the iPad is even capable of editing video in the first place. And to do that, we need to look at the specs, the tech, the hardware, and the software. So let's break it down. The cheapest model of iPad Pro that you can get is the 11 inch with 128 gigabytes of memory, coming in at around about 769 pounds or 799 dollars and that has the A12Z Bionic chip inside of it. Now, if you benchmark this against the lowest priced MacBook Pro, which is the 13 inch with a quad core i5, you can actually find that it will transcode a 12 minute 4K clip three times faster than the MacBook Pro will. And that Bionic chip has integrated graphics inside of it as well. So that is doing the work of both the CPU and the GPU. So it can clearly handle video. Now the price is a bit of an issue because at £769 or $799 plus the Apple Pencil, which is another £100, 100 bucks on top of that, then you throw on this new Apple Magic Keyboard for £299 or $299, and you're looking at over £1,200, $1,200 for this setup. You can actually buy right now the MacBook Pro 13 inch at the time of recording this at a discount price on Amazon for just under that amount. Now, whether you're going to go with an iPad Pro or a MacBook Pro, it completely depends on what you want to do with it. But what we're looking for here is whether you can video edit, not anything else to do with the iPad Pro. So if I want to make a complex edit, I need a few things. I need to have multiple tracks of video and audio to be able to make titles, to be able to color grade, to be able to edit from external storage, to be able to export in multiple formats, and have that flexibility to maybe have a dual screen setup as well. Those are the things that I want in an editing station. Can we get those out of the iPad Pro with this new ad Apple Magic Keyboard? There have been some significant changes with the iPad and iOS devices in general over the last year. I talked about it in a previous video about mobile vlogging for this year. And one of the first things that's changed is that on the iPad Pro, it now has a USB-C port. That's important because it allows you to connect a dongle or an adapter which can add on many more peripherals than you could previously have with the lightning port. And with the power of USB-C, it means that you can then have a HDMI cable, an ethernet cable, a power cable, and multiple USB cables all coming from that one port. That means we can now have dual screen with HDMI output and hardwired internet for external storage via a network attached server, such as a Synology or a QNAP, which brings me on to the next point iOS 13. It has allowed iOS devices and iPadOS to use the Files app as an actual file browser. You can now use it to copy, edit, change, delete files, folders on your phone as if it was a proper file browser on a desktop, but it also added the ability to work from external storage, including SSDs and HDDs attached to your device, or to be able to connect to a local server via SMB. Now that is incredibly powerful because that does mean that if you are working in an environment where you have lots of hard drives that you work from, or you work from a NAS in your local environment, then you can edit directly using those storage mediums. Now, the Apple Magic Keyboard, what advantage does it give? Well, for me, the advantage is going to be that tilt screen. That tilt screen and that extra port on the side of the keyboard allows you to have a dual screen setup similar to a iMac setup. That tilt function that's stable, it gives you an optimal viewing point and having a port that frees up another port on your iPad Pro so that you can have multiple peripherals attached to your iPad Pro. That changes the game slightly because that then frees you up to use the new Apple Magic Keyboard as an actual keyboard and trackpad. So you can use shortcuts 
in a NLE. You can use the cursor to drag and drop. You're not using your fingers anymore. And with the pencil, you can be tactile and you can get exactly, zoom in and out and drag the points that you want very precisely. So we have everything that we need from a specs, a tech, a hardware kind of point of view. It just comes down to this, the software. The software is what is gonna throw this new setup out of the window for me because we don't have a fully functioning, fully operating, fully fledged non-linear editing system for iOS or iPadOS. We just don't have it. We have three options pretty much. We have iMovie, we have Premiere Rush CC and we have LumaFusion via LumaTouch. Now iMovie has come a long way since its desktop days, don't get me wrong, and the ability to export your project from iMovie to work in Final Cut X, that, that is a big deal, that is very good to have and it is a good way to go if you are going to work on rough cuts only. If you are wanting a complex edit, that's just not going to work for you. You still need that additional laptop or desktop setup somewhere. Now Adobe Premiere Rush is going to have the same problem. It cannot handle complex edits. It, it is for rough drafts, it is for making things on the road. Like you, you cannot have the complex tracks, the you know, the blending modes, the colour grading, the audio, the titles, everything that you want in an edit. You cannot have it with either of those two. LumaFusion, on the other hand, oh, it's so close. It is so close to being what we want it to be but it's still not there. LumaFusion can handle 4K video inside an iOS device. It can handle multiple tracks of video and audio. It has transitions, it has LUTs, it has effects even, but it doesn't have the functionality that you would expect from an NLE. It is not as intuitive. You cannot speed ramp. Keyframing is a nightmare inside of it but you can edit from local storage, including NAS devices and hard drives. You can export in multiple formats. You can import LUTs so that you don't have to color grade in the system. So it does have those to its advantage and, and, and you can export an XML to work in Final Cut Pro with it too. But it's still got some drawbacks and it's still not a fully functioning NLE that you're all accustomed to using on a desktop setup. So for right now, I don't think that I'm gonna buy one. I don't think the Apple Magic Keyboard changes anything that substantially that I'm gonna ditch my MacBook Pro and go with this setup. I need to see more from the software side of things before I can invest in the hardware side of things. But down the line, this is gonna be the way that it's going. We're working smarter and not harder all the time. Knowing what way to spend your money is a very important decision when trying to work smarter and not harder. This is what we do at DigiPro Tips. So you know what to do right now. Hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and we'll see you in the next video.